So we've got some huge updates today. News is coming down the pipeline like wildfire. I'm trying to keep up with all of it, but we've got a huge thing from Grums talking about Compulsion Games. If you guys know who Compulsion Games are, they've actually had a pretty good track record so far, although they are involving Sweet Baby Inc. in their game development now. And I'll explain exactly how and why that's happening. But if you guys are not sure who Compulsion Games are, those are the guys who made the game We Happy Few. If you guys know what We Happy Few is, it's a very fun game. I, I played it back in the day, came out a while ago, ago it was an xbox exclusive now it had a very interesting tale about a character who is trying to fight his way out of a conformed world where people are taking pills and pretending to be happy being controlled by the establishment it's really interesting that they have taken this path but there's actually a reason for it and not everybody in compulsion games is happy about the changes that sweet baby inks involvement has caused you guys have to see this post for yourselves to believe what you are seeing check this out update more x developers come forth about sweet baby ink project south of midnight by compulsion games now if you remember last time in my video before when i was talking about compulsion there were a couple of game developers who came forward to grums in private and they were alleging some things about the company and it looks like the same thing is happening again uh, revealing that this is actually a much bigger problem within the company than was previously known. I know that I did not know they made a We Happy Few before this post. But let's read on. The community manager is still protected after saying she hates games and has a problem with Asian and white people. And just in case you guys are missing the context on that, she is protected. And I remember that the last time I talked about her, she was protected. She's been protected since then. These people are always going protected when you try to confront them about their wacky ideas about white people and Asian people and i'll show you that post as well but she says she her by pan history alum womanist dei consult i've seen that before i saw that with melanin games who made that toxicity analyzing website which i was also going to report on community manager at compulsion games she's also on twitch and logitech g partner that's insane i actually went on her twitch page she has not uploaded in about six months and this is his post from the 28th the community manager at compulsion games the studio that race swapped their mc main character after sweet baby involvement says she hates gamers and says asians are white adjacent whatever that means i have no idea but this is her post right here asian and white aka white adjacent and then she says honestly i hate gamers makes you wonder why she wanted to be a community manager but she is a dei console she's very proud of that that's why she puts it in her bio and she's protected if you look at compulsion games they are a video game developer and makers of the game south of midnight that's the game that sweet baby inc is involved in you can see the main character in the picture above we happy few and contrast an xbox studio based in montreal which just so happens to be where sweet baby inc is also located but when we continue to read on we find some very interesting information. The main character was race swapped in order to better reflect the tale set in the Deep South after Microsoft and SBI involvement. So this is how and why they get involved. The team that created their past celebrated title, We Happy Few, is mostly gone. So all the people who worked on We Happy Few, most of them are not there anymore. And apparently they left after being disillusioned about changes after the Xbox, Microsoft, and SBI involvement, studio politics, and more. So they weren't happy with the direction that their company was going in and a lot of them left because apparently less than 10 percent of the original we happy few team remains and how many of them are approving of what's going on well apparently not all of them because some of them have come forward people who still work for the company uh maybe people who used to work for the company i imagine they're not all happy about what's going on but this is information that he is being provided by these guys who came forward promotion of non-qualified staff to lead and management positions resulted in a mess of a project quote no idea how to make a game so they said they have no idea how to make a game. There were people who were unqualified, probably DEI hires, put into positions and lead positions that resulted in a mess. And I've had that happen before in companies that I've worked for. People who are completely incompetent, have no idea what they're doing, just pushed into a lead position for little reason. And then they end up screwing a bunch of stuff up because what they end up doing is ruining the process. They get in the way and they disrupt the workflow because they want to make a whole bunch of changes and it frustrates game developers. But why is it that they invited Sweet Baby Inc. into their game development? Well, there's actually a, a pretty good reason for it. Although I think that the people that they chose to help them create this thing uh, was the wrong choice. It says right here that the dev team is almost entirely white and based in Montreal, Canada. And many devs felt uncomfortable creating a game in the Deep South with so little experience in the area. And if you've seen the game South of Midnight, yes, it looks like it takes place in somewhere like Louisiana. Be out in a swamp somewhere with two 
into diverse characters. And it says right here that these people in Canada, these white people in Canada at this company, they didn't really have any idea how to depict the South properly. So this is how Sweet Baby Inc. got involved. It says SBI and POC writer were brought on board to help with a more authentic perspective. So they were relying on these people to give them an idea of what the South is really like. And of course, with Sweet Baby Inc., you know that they're going to push a diversity agenda, maybe even at the expense of white people. Who knows? But the gamer hating community manager, Katie, the person that we had just looked up, is cited on one of the many incompetent staff promoted or hired into senior positions who does no actual work. So they're saying that she doesn't even do anything in her position. She just got the position and she does nothing with it. And it shows right here that she does nothing with it because I have proof of that. A quick glance at the company page she manages, Compulsion Games, which I have the Twitter page open, reveals virtually no info about the game and consists of endless retweets of DEI-related matters and promotions about other games and companies. So if you go to Compulsion Games, you'll see right here that their last post about their own game was in June 11th, 2023. That is their pinned tweet, and everything that they are retweeting is DEI-related stuff. I mean, what's the first thing that you see? Game Devs of Color Expo. <laughs> I'm not even going to look into what that could possibly be, but it is getting ratioed in the comments. So they're not even talking about their own game. This community manager apparently is not doing her job, but she's also not willing to have a conversation either because, well, you know why. Devs paint a picture of a passion project by the creative director who grew up in the South, gone awry after Microsoft money. And of course, if you've seen the amazing things that Xbox has been saying about gamers and beautiful women in video games, not looking too hot, especially for people who work under Microsoft like Compulsion Games. Project in poor state of development, good devs with good intentions being hamstrung by poor hires and promotions not based on merit and very poor community management. That's obvious. There are many good people there, quote unquote. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are good people in any gaming development studio or public Publisher. I'm sure that there are good people all over the place who just aren't saying anything probably because of fear. And that's probably why these guys who came to Grums are anonymous because there's pressure from within the industry. There's negative pressure. My personal hope, this is what Grums says, he says his personal hope is that Compulsion Games turns this around, creates the beautiful fantasy story they intended. They should clean up staff and get a new community manager who actually loves their games and, and maybe loves gamers. Yeah, I agree. I was just about to say that. Maybe loves gamers too because she hates gamers, okay? I mean, you you can't get more obvious than that. She says, honestly, I hate gamers and they should fire Sweet Baby Inc. I agree and let gamers know they did. There are many, many devs in the industry who are held hostage, silenced by a DEI culture of fear that prevents them from doing their job or from DEI and ESG culture, lowering quality and abandoning merit, causing many talented devs stuck without promotions or forced to leave and causing projects to fail. Sweet Baby Inc., right? Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, one of the most colossal flops in gaming history, probably the worst flop in gaming history, if you ask me, or Black Girl Gamers, Forspoken. This has to change to fix gaming. And if you take a look right here, you got the South of Midnight video image. This is where they changed the main character from white to black. And okay, this is after SBI involvement. And these are some of the things that the Compulsion Games Twitter is retweeting. I was just taking a look at that. I showed you guys a couple of examples. This is all they're doing, just retweeting other people's projects, other people's games, because apparently their game is in hot water. And so is their community manager. And it doesn't help that the media is coming out in defense of Sweet Baby Inc. despite this information coming to light. As you can see from Packer Girl here, she says, curious if this is true, Cabrutus Rambo. And as a matter of fact, it's not true because I actually have the article. I read the article in its entirety. And check this out. This is an image that she took from the article. It's creator who uses the online name Cabrutus said Sweet Baby forces political agendas and DEI into their games in an interview with the site Geeks and Gamers on March 7th. Quote, I started noticing Packer patterns in some games like ugly women and male characters being weakened to make female ones look stronger. Cabrutus declined to comment to CBC News for this story. Well, it's probably because of what you're about to say next and people don't trust CBC. Several Sweet Baby staff members posted on X about their displeasure with the tracker. One staff member called for users to report the Steam page and its creator. Some have argued that only gave the detractors more attention. Some have argued, no, that, that's a fact. I think that it's good that CBC at least mentions that some people were displeased, but I think that that's severely undermining the situation and what actually happened to Cabrutus, who was harassed and had a cancel campaign conducted against him by a Sweet Baby Inc. employee, Chris Kindred, who has gone protected in their tweets over and over again while going on to podcasts to support hack writers like Alyssa Mercanti and Ash Parrish, talking a bunch of smack about gamers behind the scenes while they write trash articles 
rules and try to get people canceled. At least they mention it here, but they severely underplay the reality of the situation. Cabrutus and his supporters accused the sweet baby of censorship. Belair denied that claim, saying the studio chose not to reach out to Steam's parent company, Valve. So she goes on to point out something that I've been trying to point out too, is that Kim Belair continues to ignore the fact that Chris Kindred launched a harassment campaign against Cabrutus. I mean, that's how this entire thing started. That's why we're learning about compulsion games today. That's why we've been learning about black girl gamers and, and everything that they've been trying to do to that park place. Oh, and it says, oh, and apparently SBI guys clients have been abundantly supportive in terms of, you know, letting us know that we're safe with them and they're happy to work with us. And that's been really, really gratifying. It's amazing that all of these people love to hang out in a big circle and say the most racist, most bigoted, awful things that you've seen people call gamers, okay? I mean, there is a push to remove, especially white male gamers from the space. And of course they have support. Of course they do, because these people can't get caught with their pants down, so to speak, with all of the lies that they've been pushing, all the articles where they completely omit the Cabrutus facts and they instead they push lies. And then on their foundation of lies, they build lies on top of those lies. And now they all look like a bunch of idiots while they're trashing us and calling us the bigoted ones. It's actually quite insane. And look at Steve Saylor. Oh, that's interesting. Harassment, alarming and eerily familiar. Steve Saylor, a Toronto based gaming streamer and accessibility consultant, says consulting can be critical in ensuring ensuring characters and storylines involving people of different experiences are authentic. Quote, we want to see more folks like ourselves in games and not necessarily in the stereotypes that are normally played with in just entertainment in itself. That kind of representation can definitely have a huge impact on people. Well, their overabundance of representation in video games have had a huge impact on their game sales, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. But let's pretend that that game doesn't exist for just a moment so that we can move on to the CBC News article that I'm not going to read. So that's what Steve Saylor said, funny enough. His props are protected. What a big surprise. He's a senior writer for CBC Radio Online at that shelf. Emeritus won't stop talking about video games. Yes, even if it is a detriment to your career and people's perception of you, people do not like what he is saying in that article they've already pushed back against them gamers are just on this man they are on point when these people come out to try to gaslight gamers they are on it and these people can't stand it they, they cannot sit for a conversation they immediately run into hiding honestly I, i've gotten so used to seeing the words these posts are protected that it's just something i expect now it's like a cliche almost and last but not least cabrutus actually quoted my video from yesterday uh because i was talking about how Alyssa mercanti the kotaku writers and other people that support sweet baby inc and kotaku's action they are all calling for a mass report. They support her calls for mass reporting of Grums's account, trying to get him canceled, basically, in the same way that Cabrutus was canceled or in which they tried to cancel him. But Cabrutus shouted out my tweet, providing some pictures about things that these people have said. And I find this picture right here to be very shocking. And it's funny because he's like, well, no, you guys are going to love the bottom right one. But this top left one, this one is so telling. You guys wouldn't even believe it. All right. So check this out. This is from Sam. We're going to take a look at her Twitter and just a second. You'll see where how she's involved. I don't know about y'all, but I think I'd trust a journalist whose entire job is researching, etc. before I'd trust a YouTuber that sees a single post, doesn't fact check anything, and farts out a video 10 minutes later, but that's just me. And look at these familiar faces who have commented on her post. Farts out Lamau by Alyssa Mercanti. And guess who else? Osama Dorius. All right, if you guys did not watch my previous videos, I'll tell you who this guy is right off the bat without even having to look at his Twitter. This guy is a GDC board advisor. Higher up at the GDC, the Games Developer Convention, and he was also defending black girl gamers, saying that black girl gamers just made a website for black girl gamers to be safe from white guys. And in response, he was defended by another person who was a 22 year vet in the industry who called white people R-A-P-I-S-T colonizers. And she was also presenting events over at GDC. So these guys are all supporting each other, all coming out in defense of Sweet Baby Inc. So is the media and black girl gamers as well. And then Sam said in response to Osama, that's so true, loud people are never loud and wrong. So let's take a look at Sam's Twitter. Well, she's not protected yet, he or she, but guess what this person has done in their career? They're an artist, they love Drake Near. She, her, community rep at Square Enix. Oh, I wonder if Square knows about this. What is it with these community reps, these community managers who run these pages for people? They're always saying the most hateful things, They're always coming out in defense of the DEI nonsense. 
tweets. But even if they did not protect their tweets, that didn't stop them from blocking one of Cabrutus's people from their Discord. Um, and then in the bottom right, they're just talking a bunch of smack on Melanie Mac. And a reminder who is in this live stream, okay, with Spawn on me, the Khalif Adams guy who was just getting demolished in his tweet yesterday. Not in this image specifically, but other images I have seen from this podcast show that Chris Kindred is in there. Ash Parrish is in there. Alyssa is right there being interviewed. So you can only guess how many people that have come out in defense of Sweet Baby Inc. are sitting in this live stream pretending that gamers are going down because that's the rhetoric that was being passed around on that podcast that gamers are just going down. They have nowhere to run and that Kotaku is on the rise. <laughs> And that Sweet Baby Inc. is going to defeat the evil gamers. It's a pretty ridiculous notion, but that is reality. But I'm glad that Cabrutus shouted out this video because people really need to know about what's going on. A lot of these people have been in the gaming industry for a long time, and they've gone under the radar, and they've been doing their thing, and nobody has really noticed until the Sweet Baby Inc. thing took off. And now that it is, more truth is coming out, and game developers are now starting to stand their ground against the DEI ESG push. And they're afraid. They're afraid that they're going to lose their careers. They're afraid that they're going to have their reputation smeared by the media and by their peers. And it's a really sad situation, but I'm glad that these people are coming out and talking about it. And I think that's something that needs to happen because the more that people talk about it, the more that people on Cabrutus's Discord, Cabrutus's Steam Curator page, and just gamers in general can vote with their wallet. Because they watch this content. I've had people thank me for this content and that they've decided to vote with their wallets. And I think that that's the best thing that you can do. Going out and attacking people all the time is not a good thing, but at least exposing and bringing to light their activities behind the scenes is helpful in painting the correct narrative. And the correct narrative is that gaming is in trouble and that the only way that we're going to fix it is if we vote with our wallets and pay close attention and that's all i've got for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you haven't had the chance to like it and share it with your friends that would be awesome and hey if you're feeling ultra spicy consider subscribing to my channel so that you're always up to date on what kind of thing i've got going on i look forward to seeing you all in the next one later meow meow